they're called their friends with a a most fascinating and revealing um, discussion on the law and international relations. Uh, we have come to the end of the seventh global conference of the Society of International Law. Um, all that is left for me to do as president of the society is to make some brief concluding remarks. You are looking at a very happy, and I will confess, also somewhat relieved uh, seal president with um, almost 700 participants. The interest in this online conference uh, more than um, and considering all the things that can go wrong, difference well. Now, for those of you um, thinking of organizing an online conference, I can warmly recommend Live Forum, the company allowed us uh, to run this conference so smoothly. Over the past three days, we have three uh, keynote events, uh, five round tables, and 28 panels, or altogether, almost 50 hours of rethinking global economic governance. That you do not expect me to draw any conclusions now have been far too rich and have covered far too much ground for that to be possible. And I'm also aware that for some of you, long past midnight. So I will limit myself to one final observation. Um, observation on what I take away. Um, however, before sharing this observation with you, express first, I uh, with sponsors, um, without their financial support, this conference very difficult. So thank you um, to our gold sponsors, Van Baal and Belis. Trade Law Guide, our silver sponsor, Sitley, and our bronze sponsors, VVDB Advocates, Bonelli Erede, um, Fratino Vergano European Lawyers, and Suresh Nanwani. I would also like to thank our exhibitors, Hard Publishing, Cambridge University Press, Brill Mayhoff, Springer, and organizing a conference such as ours is teamwork. And SEAL has been very fortunate to team up with Bocconi University for this conference. Bocconi University has been a perfect academic partner. It has been a true pleasure to work with Joe and his Coney. First, on the 2020 version of this conference, which fell victim to the COVID pandemic, and later on the online version. I obviously also want to thank all the speakers, uh, the panelists, and in particular, the moderators, who very well understood online events such as ours require a more active, a more interactive form and discussions. My thanks also go uh, to the members of the SEAL Executive Council, uh, each of whom 
contributed in so many different ways to the success of this conference. Many of them should now be mentioned by name, but I think all would agree that Mashiru, who was particularly active in reaching out to our sponsors, deserves a special mention. I also would like to thank Christasis, who may be not known by many of you, but who, who for the past has been a central person in the conferences, keeping track of and bringing order in thousands and thousands of emails. I want to pay tribute to the persons without there would not have been a conference. Vice Presidents of SEAL, Ching Yi Peng, Vice President of Lyon, Isabel Van Damme, Vice President since the beginning of this year, and Marcus Wagner, Vice President both last and this year. Being the President of SEAL uh, uh, job Seal executive vice president heavy lifting. Shingi, Isabel, and Marcus certainly did so for the aborted 2020 conference and the online 2021 conference. Shingi, Isabel, Marcus, thank you on behalf of all of us. Thank you for all your hard work you paid off. Before coming to my final observation, <laughs> allow me to make three housekeeping announcements. Uh, first of all, as you know, all the events of this conference are recorded. These recordings uh, will be available uh, on this platform for the next two weeks and will thereafter be available on the YouTube channel. The next Global SEAL Conference will be held in 2023 and express interest as academic partner for this conference. And third, we'll have its meeting in an online format towards the end of this year. Observation. Um, these last clearly illustrated to me two things. That there are difficult years, very difficult years ahead for governance. Years of fundamental changes, years of tension, years worldwide as a result of a number of developments, some of which, some of these developments are to be welcome and are in fact long overdue. Some of these developments are very unavoidable. And these developments include, and it's by no means a list, but the Political superpower confrontation US and China, the weaponization of trade and investment in values and non economic interests, the unstoppable digital activity, and international efforts to address climate change and, and more generally efforts to ensure environmental and social sustainability of economic development. There are difficult years ahead of us. But the second thing I take away um, from these last three days 
is that we as international economic lawyers can and must play an important role in addressing the challenges of global economic governance in the 24th, 21st century. The discussions of the past three days certainly showed that there is no lack of ideas on how to address the challenges ahead. Um, while some of the ideas I heard, I would personally consider to be rather unrealistic, certainly in the short or medium. While that is the case, I think it's important that we're willing to think out of the box. We will need to think out of the box in order to address the challenges facing us. And to the extent that this conference has invited you to do so, it has a ambitious objective. And with this, I declare the Global Conference of the Society of International Economic Law closed. Thank you very much.